right, let's start with resonance structures. <laughs> So resonance structures are structures for molecules, they're Lewis structures, but they're showing different structures that are equally probable. And this has to do with double and triple bonding. We're going to do an example and we'll talk about why they're equally probable and how we represent that. So carbonate. polyatomic ion, covalent bonding, all non-metals. Carbon has four. Each oxygen has six. And we add two extra for the two minus charge to give us 24 electrons. Okay, so then you just draw your structure. Why did you subtract six? Because I used six in my first three bonds. Okay, so this would be a Lewis structure you would have drawn. It has, everything has a full octet, and you've used all 24 of your original valence electrons. But here's the issue. This double bond, could it be here? Yes. Yes. Could it be here? Yes. yes. So you have to represent that by drawing each possible structure. the three resonance structures for carbonate. And the reason that we have to draw all three with the double arrow between them showing that they are all three in existence is because what really happens is these electrons are in constant motion. We've talked a lot about the fact that electrons are in constant motion. And not only are they in motion, but they're moving very fast, like at the speed of light, fast. And anytime we start dealing with things that are moving at the speed of light, we have to deal with quantum theory. That's what quantum theory is. It's dealing with things moving very, very, very fast. So these electrons are constantly in motion. And this double bond is here, and then 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 here. Constantly. It's in a constant, rapid, very rapid motion. To the point that if you looked at carbonate under an electron microscope, it would appear that each of these bonds is a one and a one-third bond because that electron is moving so fast that it's almost in three places at one time. And because it's in three places at one time, the, none of these are a double bond. None of them are really a single bond. They're all like one and a third. But the best way that we can represent that is by drawing the three possibilities at the same time together. And because of this, if you measure the bond length of this bond, a carbon-oxygen bond and carbonate, it's about one and one-third. A single bond is the longest, a triple bond is the shortest, double bond is in the middle. 
these bonds measure to be about what one and one third would be because they're, that electron is in three places at one time. And the only reason it's able to do that is because it's moving at the speed of light. It's moving so fast. That's what resonance is, is representing the fact that the electron is existing in three places at the same time. The double bond is in all those places. Does this make sense to you? Okay, so in this case, you have to draw all three because all three of them exist at the same time. But there are other times where you draw the resonance structures and then you find out that one of them is better than the others. And the way you do that is something called formal charge. You calculate the formal charge for a single atom by taking the original number of valence electrons, whatever it started with, minus the number of bonds attached to it in the Lewis structure, minus the number of dots from lone pairs. Remember, resonance structures only apply to molecules with double and triple bonds. So another example that's kind of like carbonate but isn't is carbon dioxide. Where we have 16 to work with. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And these dots could be down here or here and here, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is one structure for carbon dioxide, but there are others. That works. And if that works, so does that. Now we're going to decide if one of these or is better than the other two. And the way that we do that is by assigning formal charges. You assign formal charges to the individual atoms in the molecule. So in this one, carbon. Carbon starts with four valence electrons. It has four bonds. And it doesn't have any lone pairs, no dots. So the formal charge on carbon here is zero. Oxygen starts with six, has two bonds, and four dots, so its formal charge is zero. Then this oxygen is the same, it has two lines, two bonds, and four dots. So zero. And when you're assigning formal charges and you finish, the sum of the formal charges should add up to be the charge of the molecule. If it's a polyatomic ion, the formal charges should add up to be the charge of that thing. 
In this case, it's neutral, so they should add up to be zero. All right, here, carbon starts with four, has four bonds, no dots, it's zero. Oxygen starts with six, has one bond and six dots, so it's negative one. This oxygen starts with six, has three bonds and two dots, so it's positive one. They still add up to be zero, but now the oxygens have a negative and positive formal charge. Same thing here, this oxygen is plus one, carbon is zero, this oxygen is minus one. Now, you look at your formal charges and you decide if one of them is better than the others. In this case, this one is the best because you want all of the things to have zero formal charge if possible. The best structure has no formal charges. So you want to minimize formal charge. On the test, you're only going to draw one single structure. Usually that structure has resonance, but you choose the best one to draw based on formal charge. If you, draw any, if you had drawn this one on the test, you would be wrong because this one is the best. So you always need to be checking formal charges to make sure that there isn't a best case scenario. So if you ask for resonance structures, you put all three or only the one with the zero formal charge? If I asked for resonance structures, you would put the one only the one with zero formal charge. What about all zero? If they're all zero, you draw all of them. Uh, know what this is? No. No, oh, each atom. Oh, okay. Not overall structure. Okay, now, there may be a case, and there was a case on the 2018 exam, no, 2019 exam, where... They all had formal charge. There were no cases with zero formal charge, but you still had to pick the best. If that's the case, the best structure has a negative formal charge on the most electronegative atom. And we're going to do an example of that tomorrow. We're going to work that example from the 2019 exam tomorrow. And you'll see what I mean. So be prepared to determine formal charges and choose the best structure. On the carbonate that we did before, there was no best structure. They all had the same formal charges. So you would have to draw all three. In this case, there is a best one, so you would only draw this one. 